In this video, I'm going to explain candlesticks in three levels of difficulty, ranging from beginner to intermediate and then advanced level. These are useful properties of candlesticks that are in the best interest of any trader. Candlesticks are the fundamental piece of price action reading, so it makes sense to study this part of technical analysis more carefully. Let's start with the beginner level of candlesticks. A candlestick is formed by four prices, meaning the open, the high, the low, and the close. There are basically two types of candlesticks, the bullish and the bearish. The only thing that differentiates between them is whether the close is higher or lower than the open. If the close is higher than the open, the candlestick is bullish. If the close is lower than the open, the candlestick is bearish. Given the four prices, there are three main properties of a candlestick. The candle body, the candle shadows or wicks, and the candle range. The candle body is formed by the space between the open and the close and is displayed as a thick bar. Candle shadows are the space between the open and the low and the close and the high in the case of a bullish candlestick or the open and the high and the close and the low in the case of a bearish candlestick. Candle shadows are displayed as thin lines to differentiate from the candle body. The candle range is simply the space between the low and the high. Candlesticks can take many different forms. This leads us to the idea of candlestick patterns, which are specific candlestick formations that happen repeatedly in the market, and that indicate what's going to happen with price. If you want a detailed look at candlestick patterns, watch the Ultimate Beginner's Guide to Candlestick Patterns in the video card. There you will learn about patterns like hammers, shooting stars, dojis, dark cloud cover, and dozens of other patterns. By understanding the basic candle properties and how patterns work, it's time to move on to the intermediate level explanation of candlesticks. And the key for that is called candlestick quantization. Quantization is the process by which we represent a continuous variable into a smaller set of discrete values. What I mean by that is that price changes continuously and candlesticks are a way of organizing that behavior into predefined spaces to facilitate the visualization of price. From this idea, there are two directions we can take. First, we can take a closer look into what happens within a single candlestick. The four prices are a picture of what happens inside a candlestick. Price changes continuously within the predefined time frame, and the four prices captured four fundamental values of this action. In this illustration, you can see one of the infinitely possible examples of the inner mechanics of a bullish candlestick with large body and small shadows. The continuous price change is represented by the orange line. However, the blue line is a completely different price path that results in the exact same four prices. Notice how the open, high, low, and close values are exactly the same for both the orange and blue trajectories. Another way of seeing this is that what happens inside a candlestick is like a movie, but the candlestick itself is like a picture. As I said earlier, this is one perspective we can get by looking at what happens within one candle. The other perspective of quantization is by analyzing several candlesticks and creating a composite. If you take a random piece of price action, you can quantize it to create a composite candlestick, and then you can analyze that candlestick individually through logic or through the Japanese candlestick patterns. For example, consider this random and hypothetical piece of price action. By isolating the open, the low, the high, and the close, we reach a composite candlestick which in this case is a shooting star pattern. In other words, if we compile this piece of price action into one single candlestick, we would see a shooting star. That is also another interesting perspective that allows you to see candlesticks that are not actually drawn in the chart, which might yield further insight about the market you're trading. The advanced way of looking at candlesticks depends on logic rather than the memorization of patterns or the quantization of candlesticks. Logical thinking is oftentimes simpler than quantization, for example, but simplicity does not necessarily imply ease. It's all about trying to extract the narrative contained in each candlestick by the logical interpretation of the peculiar geometry of candle body, shadows, and range. This allows the trader to interpret any candlestick instead of trying to scan the chart for specific patterns. In other words, it's a more organic approach. The candle body indicates the overall sentiment of the candle in question. The quality of the candle, meaning whether it is bullish or bearish, 
is as important as the size of the body. A larger bullish body implies a stronger bullish sentiment than a small bullish body. The candle shadows tell where price has traveled during the formation of the candle, so it is an indication of the reactivity of price to barriers in the chart. Candle shadows are also a display of buying or selling pressure. The upper shadow indicates the level of selling pressure and the reactivity of price to resistive barriers. The, lo the lower shadow indicates the level of buying pressure and the reactivity of price to supportive barriers. The context generated by the perception of bullish and bearish pressure in the shadows plus the market sentiment of the candle body gives rise to the logical interpretation of candlesticks. Understanding this will allow you to free yourself from the tedious memorization of too many candlestick patterns. Let's look at a few examples of this contextual interpretation. Take a look at this candlestick. There is a small bullish body in large upper and lower shadows. A small bullish body implies a slightly bullish market sentiment. Despite everything that happened inside this candlestick, buyers were still able to close it at a higher price than the open, so you can conclude that they won the battle against sellers in here, but not by a large margin. The fact that there are large upper and lower shadows in this candle is also critically important. It tells us that at some point during the formation of this candle, price was at the upper range and encountered some sort of a resistive barrier that made it go back down. By the same token, at some point, price was at the lower range and it encountered some supportive barrier that repelled it to the upside. In other words, there are strong sellers on the upside and strong buyers on the downside. This can be seen as an indecisive candle with a slight advantage to the buyers since we have a small bullish body. If you study candlestick patterns, you know that this is called a spinning top or a spinning bottom depending on where it appears in the chart. But by looking at it from the advanced perspective, you will understand the logic behind it, which is far more important than memorizing the name of the pattern. More importantly, Understanding the geometry of candlesticks will allow you to interpret any candle that you want. That's very important because the ability to understand any candle will enable you to understand larger pieces of price action that are composed by many candlesticks. You cannot do that by memorizing Japanese candlestick patterns. This ability of reading individual and collective candlesticks logically will also allow you to extract a surprisingly large amount of information out of price charts. This information will infuse your analysis with meaningful information that goes way beyond the mere drawing of lines or the observation of technical indicator lines crossing each other. Let's look at another hypothetical example with two candlesticks now. You'll notice that just the addition of a second candlestick elevates the complexity in the analysis. Take a look at these two candles. If you have the ability to interpret the geometry of candlesticks logically, you should be able to write a couple of paragraphs about what's going on here. In the first candle, we see a small bearish body with medium-sized and symmetric shadows, similar to what we saw in the previous example. There is bullish and bearish pressure on this candle, but if we compare it to the relative size of the candle body, we'll come to the conclusion that the sentiment provided by the candle body here is more significant. When we put the second candle into the picture, we see that there is an increase in volatility or an increase in the speed with which sellers go to the downside. That is highlighted by the size of the body in the second candle in relation to the first candle. It is as if sellers began to accelerate as soon as the second candle started. The other noticeable element in this piece of price action is the lower shadow of the second candle, which is unusually large. That implies bullish pressure at the lower range, meaning that price is reacting to some sort of supportive barrier naturally held by buyers. Contextually speaking, sellers accelerated to the downside only to find a supportive barrier, and now buyers are reacting and making the candlestick close a little higher than the limit of its lower range. Overall, sellers are still stronger, but buyers are fighting back. Notice that the elements being used to analyze the situation are actually simple, but as I said, the narrative that comes out of it can be complex especially if the number of candlesticks forming the context begins to grow. That's it for this video. I hope you were able to learn something useful about candlesticks. If you wish to take your trading to the next level, check out my premium courses. If you wish to support the channel, please click the like button, subscribe to the channel, activate the notifications button, share the video with your trading community, 
and leave your feedback below in the comment section. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next videos. Take care.